Joining me is one of our most eminent and experienced strategists, Paul Dibb. He was the head of the National Assessment Staff, director of the Joint Intelligence Organization, head of the Defence Strategy Intelligence Group. Basically, it's hardly an intelligence organisation Australia hasn't headed. He is now Emeritus Professor of Strategic Studies at the Australian National University. We are honoured to have him on the show. Paul Dibb, thank you so much for your time. Vladimir Putin has been utterly humiliated, but how is he now likely to react? It's a good question. As you know, we have very poor sources of information from this closed secretive shop called the Kremlin. And you need to understand that, unlike in the Soviet Union, the General Secretary of the Communist Party, the most powerful person, which is now Putin, the General Secretary of the Communist Party had a politburo, a political bureau, what we would call in the democratic world, a bunch of ministers. And you may recall it, uh, when Khrushchev was overthrown as General Secretary of the Party, it was a vote in the Politburo. There is nobody to constrain or restrain Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin. Uh, he surrounded himself with Soloviki, former KGB uh, agents, and the oligarchs, the people who were uh, robbing Russia blind by corruption. So what next with Putin? You're right, is looking weak. Uh, if I was Pirogin, um, whether I'm in Minsk or not, um, and I think you'd agree with this, Andrew, I wouldn't be occupying any multi-storey hotel or building <laughs> which has a veranda. <laughs> and every time I open my door, no. I'd have a glove on. Hmm? Uh, Absolutely correct. And I accept no cups of tea from strangers. But the exactly thing is that. here, because you raise a point, the, Vladimir Putin, of course, is a very proud guy, very arrogant, uh, humiliated, looking weak. The risk mm. is that he will now lash out in some way to prove he's strong. How? Yes. What do you think he could do? I wrote a piece for The Weekend Australian a couple of weekends ago, um, citing um, an exceptional analysis by a young professor of strategic studies in Israel. I think, looking at his name, his parents pr probably came from Russia. You know, the Refuseniks from the 1980s. Yep. And he's pointing out now um, there is popular acceptance amongst the people in Russia of the discussion of the use of nuclear weapons. Uh, the military, in their major journal, one called Military Thought, um, it's an absolute record of numbers of generals writing about nuclear weapons. Now, as you know, um, we used to call um, uh, the Soviet Union in the Cold War, and you alluded to this, um, uh, upper Volta with nuclear weapons. Well, you know, his, his conventional army is doing poorly. How did we get that so wrong? Um, a number of us, including me, by the way, and I don't see more, when uh, Putin went into Ukraine in, in February uh, uh, 18 months ago, I said to my wife, he'll be in Kiev in sort of 72 hours. I wasn't alone in saying that, by the way. Uh, the chairman of the US Joint Chiefs oh, no, of Staff, no, General no. Uh, Milley, he said exactly the same in a, in a classified briefing. So we got, we got their military wrong. It isn't the first time in the Cold War the American CIA used to who I'd talk with once or twice a year in my role as head of uh, defence intelligence. Paul, you know, and you're wrong to say that Russia has got weaknesses. This is 1986, Mark. The Soviet Union, said the deputy director of CIA, the Soviet Union is poised to outstrip America in every single aspect of military power. That was 86. 89, you'll recall, down goes the Berlin Wall. And 91, you and I can't sing my favourite Beatles song back in back in the USSR. <laughs> so, you know, we've got a record of getting this The point here, too, is... No, but Paul Dibb, the thing is, it wasn't you, just you, that thought the Russian army was too strong, was very strong. Putin himself did. That was his miscalculation. Yes, he he believed that the, what his flunkies were telling him. And this is the problem. You point out there's no Politburo. Well, that also means, to, to replace him, it also means there's no natural successor that people can look to either to replace him. So I think he might be there for a little while yet. And But yeah. here's the thing. This is going to be a shock to China's dictator, Xi Jinping. He's back Putin. 
In March, he went to Moscow to show his support. He told Putin the two of them so were going to change the world. Have a listen to this. Yes. So there's going to be big changes. You and I are going to do it. That now looks like two deluded men overestimating their power. Xi as well. How do you think China's going to react to what's happened to Russia over the weekend? If I was Xi Jinping... I'd be taking a very careful note and lesson of how poorly the Russian military have worked and how a dictator like Putin, and Xi Jinping is one also, has surrounded himself by yes men, and no women of course, and his intelligence people served up to Putin what he wanted to hear. That is, when we go into Kiev, We'll be met because the Ukrainians are blood brothers. We speak the same language. We have the same church, says Putin. Um, his, the, his intelligence agencies advised him the invading troops would be met with flowers. Well, sure as hell, they weren't. Now, let's take some parallels with Xi Jinping. He's got a conscript army, biggest army in the world. Conscripts like the Russians. Uh, secondly, uh, he's got a corrupt system of acquiring military equipment, just like the Russians. Thirdly, he's got a corrupt and ineffective logistics system, just like the Russians. And in addition, unlike the Russians, the Chinese have not fired a shot in military anger since 1979, when, if you recall, they invaded communist Vietnam to, and I quote, teach Vietnam a lesson. I was deputy head of military intelligence then. We had the call signs of the Chinese um, uh, military down to company group level. And we saw their four divisions come up against a battle hardened, and we knew that only too well from our own experience in Phuc Thuy province, Absolutely. a battle hardened Vietnamese division. And it was it was at the best a draw. And now, in addition to all those points, you know, you know, but I would say, know, I'd, I'd go even further. I'd say, look, here is. Here was China. The last war they had was against tiny Vietnam. And really, they got beaten, to be honest. They got beaten. And uh, I think you make some excellent points. The point is, are there enough people in China who dare tell the president, the dictator, look at what happened to Putin, don't try the same trick with Taiwan? Paul, Absolutely Dib, it's not. a great pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for your time. Well, that's what I fear too.